So in this video, we're looking at exponential functions, particularly their basic shape. Now here, I have an exponential function. And there's a couple of things that you want to take a look at when you're looking at this exponential function. Number one is that it starts off here sort of skimming along the x-axis. And then it starts to come up and up and up and up. But it, it's currently meeting the y at uh, 0, 1. And you can see it really starts to climb, and it's climbing really, really, really quickly here. Uh, this, this sort of exponential growth, you'll hear it talked about a lot with compound interest. You'll hear it talked about a lot with, uh, say, growth of a, a pandemic. Now, if I use one of these little tables that you would have filled out before, uh, let's see what happens here. So my function is f of x equals 2 to the power of x, so some number to the power of x. Now, I'll start here at the 0. 2 to the 0 is 1. You should know that. And that's where my little y-intercept comes from. 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. And 2 to the 3 is 8. And you can see that as the x's go across by 1, these numbers are doubling. 1, 2, 4, 8. Now, if that number was different, say if that number was 3, they wouldn't be doubling they'd be tripling each time. Um, if it was like 1.5, it means that each number would be being multiplied by 1.5. You can see what that's doing to the shape of the curve. As I make that, it becomes steeper. All right, but we'll go back to 2 for now. Now, take a look at what happens as I move the other way. 2 to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over 2 to the 1, which is 1 over 2, which is 1. 2 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 quarter. And then 2 to the negative 3 is the same as 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 eighth. And hopefully you can see what's happening here. It's halving each time, or it's doubling if you go the other way. But if it keeps halving forever and ever and ever, it will continue on forever and ever and ever, never getting very, 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 very close to zero, but never, ever touching what we call an asymptote. And I've put in a green dotted line here to represent our asymptote at y equals 0. Now that we have the basic shape covered of our exponential function, let's look at some transformations as well. So, here we have a function a to the x plus c plus b. Now, we already know what the a value does. The a value just changes how steep that exponential function is. is, is. Now, what about this b? You've done function transformations before. You know what happens to a function if you add something onto the end of that function. So if we add something to it, it shifts the whole function up. You can see here's my new function, 2.1. Now that b value is also going to be my asymptote because my asymptote when there was no b value or when the b value was zero is zero. Now that it's moved up by 2.1, the asymptote is 2.1. Obviously, I've moved that up, and that's become my horizontal asymptote, but I could also move that down with a negative b value as well. Again, this is just an extension of the function transformations you've already done. Now, what about this c value? I'm adding it to that x value, so you should know what that's going to do. Watch carefully, though, because it's a bit confusing. All right. Now, I say it's a bit confusing because what it looks like is happening is that the function is kind of shifting upwards. But notice the function is not shifting upwards. The asymptote's staying exactly where it is. What's actually happening, and you might have some trouble visualizing this, is that as I increase my c value, my whole function is shifting that way. And that has the effect of making it look like our axis is moving up. But what's actually happening is it's moving that way. All right, so that C value is going to shift it left and right, but the opposite of expected. So what I mean by that is if the C value is 2.6, that means it's shifted 2.6 to the left. And if it's negative something, it means it's shifting to the right. But this has been covered in function transformation. That's as really as far as I want to go with that. I really should just call that translations because in my next video we might do some dilations. 
So that's exponential functions, that's the basic shape plus some translations.